Hi, this is the Jenkins Documentation Special Interest Group meeting. It's the 26th of June. Uh, thanks for joining us. Let's look at our agenda and uh, talk through the topics and then we'll be sure we do the topics. Recording will be posted on uh, the YouTube channel. Please remember that we're uh, adhering to the Jenkins Contributor uh, Code of Conduct. So agenda review, report on previous action items. I'd like to do a demo of the latest plugin site enhancements for just to record it and show people that some of the really great things that Gavin and Spinek have done. Uh, we had a Google season of docs topic to, to cover for yesterday's office hours. Uh, we're happy to answer questions if someone arrives that needs them. We've got Oleg will help and give us an overview of Community Bridge and what the mentorship might mean and how we approach it. Uh, we'll spend a little time reminding on Doc's office hours and we've got a, a question there that we'll need to address. And then as a concluding item, review latest data on contributors and on contributions. Anything else that should be in the agenda, Oleg? Um, well, no. Uh, one topic which I would like to write is about uh, terminology cleanup. Uh, but yeah, let's just uh, put it in the bottom. If you get to that, fine. If not, we can take it uh, to another meeting. Right. Good. Good topic. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So report on previous action items. I, I did the Hackfest blog post and that's nice, but that's really not enough for the doc, what we need for the doc SIG highlighting progress. So I've kept the action item here, shaped it just a little bit to say that I need to create a status report blog post that highlights plugin site improvements, GitHub issues transition, wiki migration progress, the, a call to action for people to help us with wiki migration triage, and a proud graph to show the reduction in number of reads that are being done to wiki.jenkins.io. It's, it's interesting to see the, the falling data rate of requests to wiki.jenkins.io as we're doing page replacement. Oleg, we had an item for you on list the GitHub apps and plugins that use them. Anything you want to report there? No, still on my list. Okay. And I've still got, the, I've added the new action item to place uh, a new meeting URL into the calendar uh, so that this meeting is easier to find. Uh, my apologies that I hadn't already done it yet. I'll get it done, but it needs, we need to be consistent with the doc SIG with other SIGs where they all place their meeting URL in the calendar and they post it on their, on their SIG page. All right. Anything else on action items? No, I think um, it's fine. Okay. So we have a lot of things like review JSON. Uh, sorry, I just yeah, I just triggered the video from the yesterday meetup and uh, got distracted <laughs> a bit. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so review JSON applications. We have a lot of them in the queue, and we just need to clean up the band why. Yes. Yeah. And that's all mentors need to do that, assist in that review. That's good. I've got, I need to extend an invitation to a few more mentors. We've, we've got so many interesting pro project proposals. Thanks. Yeah. So maybe we could even uh, schedule a session to the next Friday uh, to just uh, do a review with all uh, basically is all, uh, all potential mentors on the call. So just uh, distributed office hours where you, you do everything in parallel. Good. I'm not sure whether the mentors would be available, but we could try. Well, and, and I think that seems like a good excuse to use a doodle meeting invite to see who we can, who we can get and which times work best for them. I know, for instance, this time is not good for, for a number of, of candidates. 
that might be potential mentors and we might do two sessions, something like that. So let me take the action item to, to look for additional mentors and to get a poll when they could join us. Mm -hmm. Any other action items there? Um, no, nothing for me. Okay. So next item then was a, a, a demonstration of the latest plugin site en enhancements. Uh, Gavin Mogan and Spinek Konechny have done an amazing job of, of creating the Jenkins plugin site and continuing to enhance it. So this is the plugin site. Let's take a look at it at a little higher resolution. And I look for a plugin and Notice now that across the top, there are uh, four tabs, documentation, releases, issues, and dependencies. And so in the documentation tab, that's the documentation we've had for, for a little bit now. The releases tab is relatively new and uses content from the, from the GitHub Hub releases pages to present what is a really nice layout of features, improvements, context that's generated for this plugin, in this particular case, using Release Drafter. So my job as a plugin maintainer is easier because Release Drafter helps it, and it's presented very nicely to, to readers. Uh, there's also the Dependencies tab. And the dependencies tab shows me which plugins and their versions are required for mine. And then the issues tab. Now, when I click this issue, this particular plugin has tragically a lot of issues. So I'm going to choose a, a plugin that has fewer issues open against it so that we can see a little bit faster rendering of the issues list. This will actually generate a list of issues that are in the JIRA system makes it all much easier for the for the user thanks to their marvelous work thank you very much to to gavin mogan and to shrina konechny oleg anything you wanted to highlight there yeah uh, so personally i still consider it as preview uh, there are a few reasons behind that so firstly for releases um, right now the integration supports only github releases uh, but we have a number of plugins which store um, uh, change logs and change log MD or similar files. Mm -hmm. So we still need to add support for this option. Uh, it's a small matter of programming because we basically already support this export, for example, for documentation pages. So we can render um, a markdown and a skidoc easily. We just need uh, to add an engine for that. And uh, quite uh, differently for issues, now we support on the Jenkins Jira. But uh, now many plugins actually use GitHub issues uh, to track uh, the issues. And again, we will need uh, to support uh, here for the plugin side. Good, good points. Thank you. So there, there are more things and likely more things coming. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Anyway, it's a great start. Also, now we have tabs. So we can uh, keep uh, updating the content. So for example, uh, what I have in mind, uh, uh, statistics on the right. So we have installation graph, but actually we have uh, much more stat statistics on Stats Jenkins IO, and maybe we could uh, create a new tab for all the statistics. Um, and instead of that, use uh, the right tab uh, for additional metadata, quick navigation, maybe for suggestions, etc. on the main screen. Also, I want uh, to move out uh, to integrate uh, plugin maintainers because if you go to the documentation tab, uh, now it lists uh, plugin maintainers, but actually this list uh, is not an ideal source because this list comes from PomXML. Uh, but uh, uh, the real situation is that uh, we have repository permission updater, and this is a source of truth uh, for the list of maintainers. So we will uh, easily benefit from uh, updating this list, maybe even moving the list uh, somewhere like, for example, instead of graph, putting it on the right page, et cetera, so that uh, more screen size is used for documentation when you open this page. So uh, yeah, there are such minor enhancements here and there which we can, can do, but yeah, I really like uh, the progress on the website 
as you go to the past uh, year or so. Well, and I'm, I'm fascinated by the idea of stats. I was just using stats yesterday to do some research on a potential update of a dependency and was really impressed with the, the amount of information I can extract. It's a little difficult, right? It's not, not terribly attractively presented sometimes, but I got lots of useful information out of stats.jenkins.io mm -hmm. in helping me address a question that I had. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yep, we can uh, provide a lot of information. Uh, Starts maybe better support for release histories, uh, maybe listing contributors, because yeah, GitHub does it. Why don't we do it on our side? We, we definitely could do that. Uh, so uh, things like that uh, can be definitely considered uh, next as improvements. And uh, what I hinted yesterday, the online meetup, we also need to keep categorizing plugins, uh, providing uh, more information. So for example, you look at Git client plugin, but what if we had a label for Git? We don't have a label for Git now. Right. We're not, uh, actually integrating specifically with Git. So such categorization uh, in the plugin side and plugin manager would help uh, users to easily discover plugins and why not? Very good. I like that. Uh, Zenob is having some difficulty connecting. I'm going to see if I can get the uh, answer her question, Oleg. So I'll be just a moment distracted. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it, she wanted to know the password for the meeting, and I think I've got it right here. Let's see. I, I don't understand why she would need it because it's embedded in the um in the url but there's also a, a string here that i will paste to her there so that try as the password all right so i've at least answered her question uh, i don't think that that should actually be needed but i would love to have her join us so that we could answer her questions Anything else on the on the on the plugin side, or like any other observations there? No, mm, just mm, yeah, as always, small contributors are welcome. Thank you. Super. Let's go on then to the next topic. Shall we? Maybe since there's a chance that Zenab will join us, what if Oleg, if we put Community Bridge before it? And and then we can talk about Google Season of Docs if she joins us. Okay. Mm. So community bridge is uh, also related because yeah, what we discussed previously at governance meetings, etc., that Google Season of Docs is a relatively a low scale program. So this year organizations will get one maximum two ninety, depending on uh, availability of slots. And we got a number of applications. So we explore options, how to get uh, more students potentially using, uh, not students, uh, mentors using other programs. So last year we introduced community bridge mentorship um, in uh, Jenkins. We ran one project for Jenkins configuration school developer tools with uh, sliding mirrors. It uh, worked pretty well. And yep, mm, given, uh, that uh, there is a lot of interest in documentation. I would uh, suggest to review such options for documentation projects as well. For that, uh, one problem we have is mentorship capacity. And another problem is budgets, because yeah, a community bridge allows doing a mentorship program. As, uh, for example, uh, yeah, even unpaid mentorship and basically amount of uh, money for the stipend is uh, arbitrary and decided by the organization. Uh, but yeah, for Google Season of Dogs, if you want to match uh, this stipend, I mean, for it's similar to one to participants in Community Bridge, you definitely need to shake some trees in order to find uh, uh, sponsorships and whatever. So this is what I'm working on in the background. Um, but yeah, at this meeting, I just wanted to hint that uh, there might be such options. And uh, yeah, um, I'm looking into that. 
But yeah, for me, a problem with budgets is less critical than problem with mentors. Because right. Yeah, I would be happy to run five documentation projects in parallel. But yeah, our experience with uh, Jenkins UI UX Hackfest that we have limited review capacity. And uh, yeah, if it comes to a mentorship problem, or program, we need uh, more mentors, more reviewers, and hence yeah, anyone who's interested in documentation and improving the documentation for Jenkins, please contact us. Uh, because yeah, this is something where we could uh, improve the situation a lot. Excellent. Yeah, the, the, the experience with the Hackfest highlighted our need for more mentors, more reviewers, more people who, who are willing to assist as Jenkins skilled users. Now, I assume that uh, in this case, mentors probably don't have to be explicitly docs experts, but they probably do need to be Jenkins experts. Do you have any guidance you want to give on that with regard to who would be a good candidate for mentoring and uh, to act as a mentor? Mm, so uh, definitely they need to have expertise in Jenkins because all documentation projects are related to, uh, to the Jenkins features and uh, the experience uh, with Jenkins as a user is really important. Yeah, I would uh, like to highlight that as a user, not as a developer, not as a contributor, because uh, all the projects we have on the list, uh, they focus uh, user documentation. Uh, at the same time, yeah, it will be about documentation. So basically some expertise with documentation as code, with a doc, with markdown, uh, it would be definitely welcome. It's not critical because we will have other mentors and org admins who would be able to help with that. And yeah, what else would be needed? Yeah, also um, some time, which is probably the, the most important resource in this question. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and I, I liked your note that experience with docs and ASCII docs is, is good, but I would argue is almost a teachable skill, even for the mentors that if they needed to learn that while, while acting as a mentor, that's probably okay. The crucial thing is they do need to be experienced in the use of Jenkins, right? Mm -hmm. if, if they, if they aren't familiar with Jenkins, that makes them a very poor mentor. It's really hard to mentor someone on, documenting Jenkins if you're not a Jenkins user. You, they, now, now, I assume they really don't particularly need to be um, specific language skills, right? I mean, we could, this does not require that, oh, you must somehow be native speaker or something like that. Rather, Jenkins use is the crucial thing and, and the other things are, are nice to have, but we, we need users. Mm -hmm. So, in, in, they certainly need to be able to English to read the English language, um, but I would guess not. Not I'm, we're not as worried about. Oh, are, is the role of a mentor to be a grammar checker? They really aren't. Yes, but, well, somebody would have to do that. And yeah, one thing which uh, makes sense to highlight. So if we talk about Google Season of Docs, Google Season of Docs is solely focused on uh, documentation in English. If we talk about uh, community bridge mentorship, basically it's a self-funded program, but at the same time we define other rules. So for example, uh, it means that uh, if there is a uh, potential uh, technical writer and uh, contributors who would be interested in documentation, for example, in Chinese, in French, or uh, uh, working uh, localization, etc. It would be considerable for community bridge. That's a, that's a, a a good a good and an interesting idea. I had not thought of that. It makes sense. We could choose. It's, it's Community Bridge. The Community Bridge is funding from the Jenkins Project typically, and therefore the Jenkins Project could choose to fund someone who writes Chinese language documentation or who updates a localization. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So it's, uh, well, it's totally up to the team. Uh, definitely it will require um, uh, voting by the board. 
uh, well, especially if we talk about uh, um, projects with a stipend, because it's about uh, several thousands of dollars. Uh, but yeah, assuming that uh, there is consensus that we run this project, it's possible. That makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And do you have any anything you want to describe there in terms of what sorts of next steps should people take if they would like to be considered for this? Is it something where you're looking for candidates? I know I'm going to be recruiting for mentors. Uh, anything you want to recommend there? Or is this still, this is what's coming and we'll do a, a webinar or a, a blog post on it as we get closer? <laughs> Yeah, so for com so for Google Seasonal Docs, we all set with regards to the mentorship team. We have mentors. Uh, obviously, we could have more uh, for community bridge. Uh, yeah, with the assumption that for every project we need at least two mentors. Uh, yeah, then if you want to f run five projects, we would need to find a lot of mentors. And then a number of uh, participants at this SIG meeting. Uh, well. It, it will definitely be a good challenge for us. Right. But yeah, I would be interested uh, to try. And if you can find someone, uh, okay, we had a lot of contributors uh, to the documentation that you are UX hard first. Uh, maybe somebody would be willing to be a mentor. Uh, so let's just uh, talk to people. And yeah, another hint is that if you talk about community bridge mentorship, uh, Again, we have more flexibility in terms of uh, project duration and in terms of uh, project timeline. Because again, we as project define it on our own. So for example, if somebody is available for one month's project only, we could uh, figure out something. If someone uh, wants to start uh, not in September like for GSOR, but in November, again, it's something we could do. So. I like that. That's so. The idea there is that if they wanted to do something shorter, they could. If they said, "I'd like to try a, a four-week project of this," I propose it. Um, now, are you envisioning that a community bridge pro a project proposal for community bridge would follow some of the same patterns we've used for Google Season of Docs, where they write up the proposal, it's reviewed publicly, etc. Yeah, mm, so basically Google Season of Docs follows uh, more or less uh, the uh, best practices of Google uh, season, uh, Google Summer of Code. And Google Summer of Code is a 16 years old program uh, with thousands of students, uh, more than 10,000 of students by now. Um, and yeah, it's pretty successful. It has quite established practices. A lot of uh, uh, knowledge uh, was collected. Obviously, when it comes to documentation, uh, there are some changes in practices. But in principle, yeah, I think that uh, it's uh, the same framework. I do not see particular change, uh, particular need uh, to change it. Maybe yeah. The, with regarding to uh, time frames, it's something we could change, but yeah, all the basics I believe would remain the same. So public publication, public uh, uh, review of the drafts, then uh, what that means, mentorship teams uh, do final decision, then community bonding, coding periods with demos, with uh, blog posts, and yeah, then the project completion. So I believe it will be the same. Great. I like that. Nice. Excellent. Anything else that you'd like to share on Community Bridge? No. Okay. Um, now, I haven't seen if no, no Zenab yet. So um, let's skip ahead to Doc's office hours. Uh, as a reminder, we have Doc's office hours Monday late evening. It's, I believe, 10 p.m. UTC uh, and Thursday morning, or oh, sorry, morning is such an, ob it's Thursday mid-afternoon UTC, if I remember right, Oleg, isn't it? It's, um, yeah. so it's, it's like two or 3 p.m. UTC, mm -hmm. which is hardly morning. So Thursday, 
Yeah, I'm just checking for the break now. Yeah, 10 p.m. UTC, I think, is when that one is. And I think it's 2 p.m. UTC. Uh, yes, it's 2 p.m. UTC. Okay. So next week, uh, the meeting at 2 p.m. UTC will happen. Oh, okay. Yeah, but again, uh, it really depends on the participation. If there is no uh, potential mentors joining during this time slot, actually this time slot was selected based on the feedback in Doodle. Uh, and there were several votes of uh, participants who would be interested. But uh, yeah, if nobody joins again, I will just cancel these sessions because as yeah, any other contributor, I have a lot of other things to do. Right. Like like right. interviewing the applications. Yes. Now I was really pleased last last Monday's 10 p.m. UTC. We had six who attended, and it, it was a a very good session. That mm -hmm. I, it reminded me I've got a lot of things to review. Uh, so yeah, right. the week prior, if I remember, you didn't have any that attended the 2 p.m. UTC. Yes. So one thing that the time slot is probably not ideal, for example, for Europe because it's working hours and not everybody can participate during working hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not Google seasonal for code when we talk about students. Uh, most technical writers uh, work somewhere. So. At the same time, it's probably not enough early, for example, for East Coast. Uh, so, yeah, the, the time is, and yeah, it's probably too early for West Coast. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Uh, but definitely, this slot is not uh, working well. So, um, yeah, I'm open to change the time, time slot, but if not, okay. Yeah, and, and I think that's that was what motivated us to choose that monday evening late it's after working hours for in most in many portions of the us and very late in working hours even in california so but but again the, the i think you hit it you described it exactly correctly those hours are for contributors and if no one's there to to attend we'll look for other hours or cancel them we've got other things we can do that help the docs Great. Okay. All right. Um, you would mention terminology cleanup. You want to give a summary there, Oleg, of, of how we're progressing there and things that the doc sig should be considering? Yeah, so, well, well uh, we do some progress there. Uh, the progress is not that ideal uh, because, uh, well, again, we would benefit from more contributors. Uh, we got a lot of contributions to English uh, uh, documentation cleanup, especially built-in documentation. Uh, we got contributions to French uh, documentation, but if you go to the GitHub query, you can uh, still find a lot of uh, entities. If you want, I can just screen share and show how to find that and how to fix that actually. That would be wonderful. I would love to have a live a live demonstration so that people can see, mm -hmm. hey, if you're really concerned about this uh, uncomfortable or inappropriate tech terminology, here's a chance to go help us fix it. Yeah, actually, I wanted to record a, a really short demo. It was something like five minutes, uh, so when I fix something. But yeah, maybe I will do it uh, next week and after I return back. So yeah. I'll, share my screen okay do you see it i do okay so here we have a roadmap item agent terminology cleanup it's also linked from the SIP meetings it's linked from the uh, previous blog posts so this is what we are working on at the moment uh, there is also um, a master and blacklist whitelist terminology cleanup on the table but we're still discussing in the developer community how to approach that. There is a million list thread about that. Okay. So if you're interested to know the current status, you can find it here. Uh, okay. So terminology cleanup. Yes, this thread is uh, pretty long. Uh, but yeah, there is a summary from Alex Earl. Uh, so basically, for, for master terminology, we have a consensus. We want to change that. Uh, we don't have consensus what would be the new name. 
and our decision is that we will proceed with a public vote. So we will uh, select 10 uh, most popular options, uh, put them on the ballot, uh, and uh, after that, uh, governance uh, meeting will decide uh, what would be the final choice. For blacklist, whitelist, again, we have a decision we want to change that. We also have the decision that we don't want to enforce a single term. So we expect plugin maintainers uh, to decide what exactly would be preferable for them. The default recommendation is uh, the not list allow list, but yeah, basically every the plugin maintainer makes a decision on their own. So, so that one for me was a, a very enlightening to watch some of the transitions because many of the transitions significantly improved their phrasing by removing the use of blacklist or whitelist completely and not using allow list or deny list. They just described what they were doing without using a keyword to, to talk about it. So it is very, that one is very much context dependent. Yeah, same for master. I already cleaned up a few entities of that because yeah, again, in many cases, you can just try to go to the Jenkins web interface, etc. You do not need a master term. Right, right. And in fact, yeah. it, if anything, it distracts, mm -hmm. it detracts from a good explanation. We, we used it as a shortcut, but really a good explanation needed, needed a better word than, than either master or agent or slave even. It, there are better ways to describe it. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to agents, which is probably the most critical part. So for agents, we didn't really need uh, any decision because the decision was made in 2016. We decided that the new terminology for slaves is agent or node, depending on the context. Um, and uh, there is an epic which includes a lot of cleanup items. So we updated this epic a bit, we put it on our roadmap. And here, for example, you can see that uh, there is a number of links uh, for new camera friendly issues. So here in this epic, uh, yeah, we have some, if I log in, uh, you can find maybe two dozen or so whatever issues reported, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. And uh, if you want to see a real extent, you uh, just need to use GitHub queries. And here, for example, you can uh, find a, a few examples. And uh, if you use another language, then you can again just run a GitHub search. So for example, here for slave, uh, you can find that there are more than 3,000 occurrences. Some of them are in the code. Some of them are in HTML. I'm not sure what exactly, mostly documentation and health files, you can, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, for example, what else? Markdown, it's mostly documentation and read new pages. And so some uh, usages uh, are related to API. Uh, we also have a plan to clean that up. But as you may imagine, uh, cleaning up uh, APIs is a bit uh, a bigger problem. But uh, for example, here you can uh, find examples uh, just inside uh, the documentation. So I'll just show how to fix something. OK, for example, Jake Cloud's plugin. So let's take a look at this page. Uh, so this is a documentation. Did GitHub? Oh, right. So let's see. Mm. So this uh, is the page which is already used uh, on the plugin site, I believe. Uh, oh, so it's already used as documentation even. So we... Uh, that's what I'm going to check okay. because I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. Really, I didn't use JCloud's plugin these days. But yeah, it uses um, GitHub as a source of documentation. Okay. And here, for example, if you search for slave, you can see that uh, there is a number of uh, occurrences there, actually quite a number of them. Right. And yeah, I'll just show uh, how to fix that without using any ID, etc. Uh, basically, this is a readme file. We use this readme file as a source of documentation. And here, let's see. So you just yeah. click the pencil to edit it, mm -hmm. and and now you're in an editor, okay. Yeah, I'll just repeat. Yeah, so if you go to the Jake Clouds page, there is a readme, so you can click on this file. And here, there is a pencil button. 
So depending on whether you have access to this repository or not, uh, the behavior will be slightly different, but generally you will get to this edit page. And here, for example, uh, just to avoid pushing to master, I will uh, just say, uh, okay, uh, let's just do a full cycle. Mm, yeah. Okay, so I log in uh, to Jira and I will report the bug within uh, this epic OJ Clouds plugin. Mm. Okay, and that's the, the reporting a bug helps by alerting others who check that, mm. oh, somebody's already working on this. Yep, uh, it's not really required. Okay, so this is optional. Great. Yeah, so I just created uh, because. Uh, um, some containers still require Jira issues for that. Uh, ah, right. Uh, but yeah. If you want to submit a quick patch, you do not really need to do that. Um, and, so, and it will require a component there, won't it? So yeah. you and the uh, component for us is JClouds plugin. Oh, okay, that was easy enough. Okay, so I didn't spend too much time on uh, writing uh, description, etc. I will just start working on that actually. Mm, and here, for example. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at our page. Again, in GitHub, uh, you can search. So for example, I just searched for slave. So, and that, that search thing, you did that just by pressing Control F? That was... Yeah, you uh, press Control F. If you want, you can have regular expressions. So for example, he makes sense uh, to just uh, use uh, Mm, okay, just uh, use uh, the search because uh, yeah, there is also not slaves, but uh, uh, not also slaves, but slaves. So I mm -hmm. used a regular expression and looks like I completely messed it up. Uh, yeah, because. Uh, uh, oh, it has to use sli surrounding slashes to mean it, it, this is yeah. a regular expression. Yeah, I have uh, never really used uh, the regular expressions in this way. Right. Okay. Now it works. Okay. So here we basically see the list of items we want to clean up. And again, you can see that some of them are related to plugin IDs. So it's not something we can fix easily, but uh, let's just clean up uh, what we can. And yeah, again, if you check it out, you can just uh, replace it uh, quickly. But yeah. Well, and I think on row 24, that even is is calling out a profile. So I think that's one of those where it's actually not even an ID. That that I think you, isn't this an example? And therefore we could actually there, even though it looks like a plugin ID, we could say agent there. Oh, yeah, right. You're right. So let's just continue. Mm -hmm. So th that that item for me was a reminder that sometimes we may look at an identifier and think, oh, mm -hmm. this is an identifier, but in fact, no, it was just an example, and we can easily replace that and safely replace it. Yeah. So here, yeah. So you can see uh, on the new configured agent. So here again, this is. Uh, terminology because yeah, there is computer, so there is agent or node. Uh, yeah, and uh, in that case, yeah, the word example, computer didn't help me. I think just configured agent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. So yeah, that's uh, why I turned it up. And there is check the box check out uh, as a single use slave. So this one looks like to be a part of uh, our documentation. Uh, well, and probably that's probably some sort of, of user interface mm -hmm. component. So it could. Yeah. Yeah, you can yeah. see it's uh, right inside. So we will return back to that. Uh, but yeah, let's just keep doing Ooh. What we... Oh, you're going to boldly change it and then you will go in and ch propose a change also to the, that text in Java. Yeah, because why not? Again, right. I do not need ID to 
do that. Right. Okay. Uh, in the worst case, uh, yes, tests will fail. Or maybe a certain test harness will fail if, if it really right. is. If somebody uh, really coded a, a dependency on that exact string. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, so this uh, first part. Um, yeah, we want to submit a patch right now because instead of that. Uh, oh, oh, so there's a way for you to continue working on that branch and change multiple files. Exactly. Okay. So that's I, what I'm going to do. I, I will uh, click go to file and here we have this file, uh, jclouds one off slave. So again, uh, we can't really do anything uh, with the name of this file because it's a part of public API and renaming it, uh, it's also persisted on the disk, etc. In principle, in, it's possible, uh, but yeah, it will take a lot more time than we have <laughs> this meeting. Mm -hmm. So let's also clean up this file. Because yeah, again, we can. So here what you're cleaning up is really a, a user interface string that's presented to the user, but does not require a change to the class structure or the, mm -hmm. the, the compilation environment. It doesn't exactly. break compatibility. Yeah, so I clean it up here. Then we also have uh, lock messages. Again, well, it doesn't. So here these locks uh, actually go to the web interface. So it doesn't really hurt to change it here as well. So again, uh, what was my ID? Okay. Okay. Okay, so just another patch. And and this time you said commit directly to the branch that you had established before, but you still have not created a pull request. Yes, I'm going to do it later. Interesting, uh, okay. Well, if, if you want, we can clean it up. Uh, oh no, this, I, I'm, this is great. Thank you for doing this. Okay, so let's just check whether we have other usages of slave. Uh, yeah, you can see that uh, there is a lot of other things here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, uh, I will probably leave it uh, to somebody who wants to fix that uh, and who has some time because yeah, there is a lot of such straightforward things, but there is a lot of usages. And the uh, doing it with browser probably not ideal uh, because in ID you can just do massive replace, etc. Right. So I will probably leave it uh, where I started. Mm. Well, but, but you have already shown, hey, this here's a way to update the visible documentation. And one of the references actually in a display name from source code uh, to improve it, then yeah, I could we could do an IDE based search and replace or use my e tags. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the second file. Yep. So I'm just uh, applying. I will just submit a pull request. And again, if you do a patch like that, please don't con be concerned if your pull request doesn't fix everything because it's still a step forward. Right. Uh, but I... And so it, this could have, for instance, touched the Javadoc where Javadoc uses of the word slave, it would be fine to replace them and the online help other other things, but it's okay that you're doing just one small step towards this improvement. This The improvement you did was something you detected, therefore yeah. 
it, it helps you readers by, hey, let's remove, fix the things that we mm -hmm. detect. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so any patch matters. And yeah, now we spent uh, a bit more than five minutes on patching two files, but we, we replaced some occurrences. And if you do the same for another plugin, etc., uh, gradually we will get there. So, well, it's a legitimate patch. I'm not sure what uh, the maintainers will uh, say about that, because for example, they may say that uh, you have to update the entire code base, and then I will do that. Just not today, but still, it's a uh, good stuff. Right. So, yeah, maybe next week I will record um, another demo, which will be a bit more straightforward. But yeah, generally, it's what we can do, and it's really easy. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that was. I thought that's brilliant. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, thanks very much. Oleg, we had one more item. It was just Google season of docs. Uh, we don't have any other participants, so I'd note. July 9th is the deadline for project proposals to Google. Uh, mentors will be reviewing and commenting on proposals over the course of the next week, week or so. We look forward to further conversations. Questions can be raised in Monday's office hours or in next Thursday's office hours, or we're happy to discuss it in the, the Gitter chat channel, uh, happy to discuss it in the Google Docs mailing list or in the Jenkins Docs mailing list. All those are great places for discussion. I'd propose that we not worry about looking at the data on contributors and contributions, given where we're at in time, Oleg, and say That's let's re people can refer to the notes. I'm not concerned by the data I see. I'm actually really quite pleased that we've got lots of contributions and lots more contributors. Those are a good thing. And our rate of reviewing is, is not as badly out of line as I was worried it might be. So. Yeah. so yeah, speaking of the reviews, we have two blog posts staged. One is for external fingerprint storage, another one is for um, yeah, the UIX Hackfest uh, uh, user interface part. So if you have some bit of mark, it would be appreciated if you you could review that. Yes, absolutely. So so mm -hmm. on on those, let me do those first thing because blog posts mm -hmm. blog posts tend to be a time time sensitive thing. Let me get those reviewed shortly after this meeting. Okay. I won't even mention uh, the Italian localization in Jenkins Core. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, 10,000 clients, so nothing to worry about. <laughs> Alessandro Menti, I'm, I'm very grateful to his, his work on that. Yeah, that, that one is huge. And I started looking at it and realized it is enormous. So, so I will happily take a look at it. <laughs> Great. Anything else, Oleg, before we end this meeting? Nothing from you. Okay. A recording will be posted. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Oleg, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.